using Sportsbox Studio to look at the world number one Scotty Scheffler's golf swing. As we're aware, there's some very unique variables about his swing um, you know, regarding his foot action. But let's go behind the foot action and sort of see where it comes from and try and understand maybe what some of the purpose of it is. So Scotty is what we call a profile one golfer. That means he's slightly more on top with his trail arm action. So his arm folds and you know gets very deep in the backswing. So we'll see at the top of the backswing, his hands disappear behind his head. So he's a deep swing versus a wide swing. And he is a front post golfer, which means that he's going to get to his lead side early. And usually that means that they have more sway uh, at impact. And so when we combine those two things into being a profile one golfer, it usually means that their body is very stacked at the top of the backswing. So usually they'll have less uh, what we call sway gap. So the gap between the upper body and lower body that address. But sometimes, you know, nature and nurture, it looks like he's trying to uh, lean a little bit more, but by the time he re-centers and gets to the top of the backswing, he's got a pretty low sway gap. So let's go through some of these things. So first thing we're going to look at is the sway number over here. Um, so this is before the trigger. So sports box zero sway at the moment that the club moves away from the ball. Um, so this is before he's moving. So let's go ahead and move it. So that's first movement, zero. And what we're going to see here, if I commentate it, we're going to see his sway go negative, which means he's moving away from the target about, get out of the way, 0 0.8 inches, at which point, at this point in the swing, he's actually starting to move his pelvis back towards the target. Now, very easily we can see that because of the number. But if you watch the video also, we can corroborate that with the, the numbers and see that he really is doing that. So let's just move through and say right around here, he's moved the maximum to the trail side. And as he continues to swing, we're going to see his pelvis move more towards the target. At the top of the backswing, see where he is. He's back to pretty close to zero, which is where he started, or even fractionally 0 0.2 towards the target. So his center of his pelvis is fractionally forward at the top of the backswing relative to where he started. Remember what I was saying about uh, deep versus wide? So his right arm is very much behind him and his hands are behind or even slightly ahead of his head. If we look at that from down the line on Sportsbook, we'll see that the mid hands thrust number is pretty big. So his hands have moved away from the target line, but we're not going to look at that one today. So we can see it here, in fact, it's a beautiful studio. So the hands are behind him here. Some of the under golfers, so profiles seven, eight, nine, they're going to be more under. The elbow is going to be more in front. So you see, we can see his bicep here. Um, so someone with a stronger grip, the hands are going to be out here more. So there's going to be less depth. So he has a deep backswing. Big turn. So we can see 105 degrees, um, 44. The front post golfers pivot more around their lead hip. And that gives them a little bit more turn than average. And if we look at his sway gap uh, at the top, negative 1.6. So his upper body is just a fraction to so 1.6 inches to the trail side of his lower body. Let's take him back to um, address and take a look at the evolution of the sway gap through the swing. So he's, we can see he's got a very distinct sort of tilt to his body. Um, from a number standpoint, where is, oh, there it's right there. So this is from uh, underneath. So this is his center of his chest projected down into the ground. And this is the center of his pelvis projected down into the ground. And the gap between them, so from here to here, is close to three inches. A lot of people you know, try and tilt to the right in order to hit up on it a little bit more. But now, because he's a profile one golfer, he reduces that gap uh, by the time he gets to the top of the backswing. So he is at 1.6. So he's actually reduced it, and in my opinion, moved closer to his nature, being more stacked at the top of the backswing. And this sort of relates to that foot action that we see that's very distinctive. Um, so as he's coming through, he's moving very far forward. So if we move into transition here, we can see, let's just hold it maybe just before left arm parallel is always a very interesting point. Interestingly for him, he's also got a, a pretty bent left arm. Um, so usually at this point, we're going to see the pelvis is at its lowest. And in his case, when we look at the sway, he's moved four inches towards the target from where he started. So he's, he's very much on his left side. Uh, let's bring up chest sway. Oh, we got it. Perfect. 
So we've got pelvis sway and chest sway very much stacked on top of each other. And, you know, at this point, you've got to say to yourself, well, hmm, if he were to continue to do that, he's going to hit the ball very low, right? And that's kind of the secret to his foot action, in my opinion. It's almost like he's going to hit it low. Oh, no, he's not. He's going to hit it high. So late in the downswing, he then pushes really hard. Uh, let's take a look at his pelvis lift. So he, he is very high, obviously, through the ball. So he lifts 3.8. I wonder what his lowest point is. So it's going to be just before club uh, left arm parallel. So what does he get down? Oh, downswing. So he's gone from down 1.9 inches to up 3.8. Now that would be a yellow number because it's higher than average. We have the ranges and we can check the range um, pretty easily. So let's see an impact exactly. So we click on that. Mm, yeah, well, I uh, just want to see the range for pelvis lift of impact. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So we can see, you know, the, the pro range is uh, up 1.6 to 3.6, male pro, and he's up 3.8. So obviously he's got a lot of lift. That's, uh, you know, why his feet are coming off the ground. And in my opinion, that's a shallowing move because if he's moving, you know, into his lead side, both with his upper body and lower body that much, he has to do something to shallow the club. And it's kind of a, a interaction between him lifting his body and also releasing. So if we look, watch his wrist angles, he's actually one of the, the guys that lines the club up earlier. Um, let's do face on, jumping around, sorry. <clears throat> so we can see that he really isn't holding on to a lot of angle here. We, we've got a graphic for that too. There you go, 145. So he's letting the angle out earlier than most. So he's adding loft with his club, but de-lofting almost with his body. But then once he pushes up, uh, that would be a very big sort of shallowing move and enables him to pick it. Um, you know, he hits it really high and straight. And so therefore for me, as this club is moving out and away from him, it's getting heavier, he's moving to the lead side and now he's pushing up. Um, that's one of the mechanisms that the human being uses you know, as the club is moving away, you know, if you didn't do anything else, you'd hit the ground. That's one of the mechanisms we use to, to control, you know, how high we hit the ground. So, you know, the thought that we should be sort of staying still and with our butt against the wall and not moving our posture is, is actually robbing us of our ability to actually consistently hit the middle of the sweet spot. So very interesting, a lot of load, a lot of left, and then of course a lot of lift to match the fact that he's, he's lining his club up a little bit earlier than average. So that's kind of Scotty Scheffler and partially why he's lifting with his feet. I would say it's a shallowing move and it definitely helps him to stabilize the club pace. You know, he squares it up very early and it stays square for a long time.